Hello and welcome to Life Questions. I am Bill Harris, your host. Our program looks at contemporary issues from a scriptural standpoint to promote biblical truths. Many thanks to you, our viewers, for your questions and queries about life. And as always, we have amassed a great panel to research your questions and to share their insights with you. Now I'd like to introduce you to them so you can see what they are all about. First, we have Dr. Joshua Steinke, who is a chiropractor. His ministry is Worship Anyway. Followed by Dave Wasnowski of the Neighborhood Relief Ministries. Then there's Dale Ann Ross of Remnant Worship, followed by Jody Mears, also of Remnant Worship. And I should say that none of them are really pastors in terms of lead pastors, but they have outreach ministries. And what is unique is what they have brought to the table in terms of outreach ministries about worship and about ministry. You know, I'd like to start by asking you a question, and I'll start with you, Dave, um, about mental health issues, particularly stemming from COVID-19 um, and the isolation and the loneliness people have felt in, in separation, being socially isolated and the like. What mental health issues do you see that you're having to deal with, both in terms of a psychological aspect mm -hmm. and spiritually? Yeah, well, I, I know you guys probably see it a little bit more than me, uh, you know, being in, in the darkness uh, a lot. But um, anytime we, we hit the streets, obviously there's a lot of uh, issues, uh, not just in the street, but even in the church. Um, but, you know, uh, it, it, it was very evident in the Bible um, that demonic spirits or unclean spirits have been roaming around and causing havoc in, uh, on people and in our communities. And so, um, you know, I think what, what we've done is we've kind of tried to just ignore it, you know, or uh, we don't know how to deal with it. And we kind of just push those people to the side or we, we give them medication and we say, you know, we just want to change their behavior or just isolate them, keep them away from the general society. And uh, I think what we're finding is, is that when we can come into these situations and introduce them to Jesus, yes. come on. Yes. And, and they, they have an experience with the Holy Spirit. Uh, they, they're not just, it's not just behavior modification, but it's a radical transformation mm -hmm. that takes place in their heart and in their mind. And we see change in them. It's, it's I mean, we see it happen mm -hmm. all the time. And so um, the, the things that are happening with, with COVID and, and you know, uh, loss of job and financial struggles and, and death, you know, these are all issues that are not uncommon, um, but, but they're really uh, spiritual uh, issues. And we need to deal with them uh, in a spiritual manner um, to get victory in them and, and overcome them, so. Mm -hmm. Anybody else want to chime in on that? What, what, what are you seeing and what are you having to deal with in terms of mental I issues? I absolutely agree that we're not fighting flesh and blood. And a lot of times um, I am not discounting that somebody cannot have like a level of a chemical imbalance mm -hmm. or anything like mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that's where the Holy Spirit comes in to discern like, is this a spirit we're dealing with or is this a chemical imbalance? And mm -hmm. he's faithful Excellent. to show us that um, so that we can get them the proper help. We're made of three parts, spirit, soul, body. So is this a spiritual issue? Is this a soul issue? The mind, the will, the emotions. What do we need to do to figure out what soul wounds you have? Because Jesus mm -hmm. comes to bind up those wounds so we can hit it in the soul area. And then Josh probably could piggyback on the body. The body is a huge part and the body needs to be ministered to as well. Um, and so I think we see it as a three part thing that it's like, okay, once we've uh, walked in our authority and walked in the anointing of Jesus Christ and we've told these demons to go, now we need to send them to somebody that they can tear down the strongholds and the lies that they believe, right? Um, and, and, and disciple them to Yes. remain yeah. free yeah. because we can't just cast out the demon and then let them go because right. the enemy is going to try to come with re-entrance. Sure. Oh, yes. And so then we need people and we need the body of Christ to come and disciple these people and help them with the strongholds and the lies of Satan that they believe. So there's not re-entry. Mm -hmm. 
And then lastly, I believe, and maybe you could touch on this, the body is such a huge part. And I can speak on mental health because I've struggled with mental health. I've mm -hmm. struggled with anxiety and panic attacks and all those things. And I, God took me through a process of, of realizing the oppression and then dealing with the solical wounds and then going, you know, I see a chiropractor. I see, you know, those things to get my body in mm -hmm. harmony and working properly because it's the temple of the Holy Spirit. It's the vehicle mm -hmm, yeah. to do the things that we need to Excellent. do. And very often, um, people are not uh, that open about the mental issues and the like and, and want to be uh, ministered to. And so how can anybody know what to minister to other than the Spirit of God might reveal that? What have you noticed with your background as a chiropractor yeah. and, 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 as well? What have you noted in terms of ministry needed? In this area? is a huge deal, especially, I mean, the last 10 years of my practice were more than, than just back pain, neck pain. In my practice, it's a, we deal with the whole body and, and we work with design, right? How was your body designed to be by God, right? Mm -hmm. Beautifully and wonderfully created in the image of God. And so, but in the last two years, especially, I've seen this a huge deal because what we have happening is the fear factor, right? The fear of all the, what's going on in the world and the whole COVID thing. And then um, people are, are more stressed out than ever before, right? Okay. We see people's stress levels. And then, so, so physiologically what's happening is cortisol is like overabundance in people's bodies. So they're not sleeping as much. They're stressed out more. Their relationships are falling apart because of all of that. And then that's created more anxiety and more depression and more. And so now we see more uh, suicidal people. We see more people that are on uh, medications and, and overabundance of those taking more medications than they need to be and illegal drugs, right? We see mm -hmm. alcohol and drug mm -hmm. uh, abuse you know, skyrocketing, especially in our local communities. And here's the thing, we're so worried about talking about COVID and the virus and all this other stuff surrounding that, that that stuff's been pushed aside. Well, let me interrupt you, ask you long, uh, just long enough to ask you then. Th there's a big push to legalize uh, marijuana for recreation, mm -hmm. use, recreational use mm -hmm. all over the country. We know it's already illegal in many states, uh, I think mm -hmm. about 19, 20 states already. And, and it's, it's being heightened by virtue of the fact that we've got all this pressure because of COVID and, and other social and uh, uh, political issues we're dealing with uh, as a relief factor. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? The problem is that it still continues to be something that we're trying to cover up the symptoms yeah. ah. and never getting back to the cause yeah. of the problem, yes. right? Yes. And, and just as Dale and said, there can be you know physiological things that are going on in somebody's body, but it, so long as for the rest of man, uh, it, it, that we try to cover up symptoms, we're always going to have more problems yes, that yes. arise from that. Mm -hmm. And so all I see that is, is another way to cover up symptoms. And you can give me all the research on this is better than medications or whatever it may be, but we're still, the point is we're covering up a symptom, never getting to the cause yeah. of the problem. Yes. So you're never going to get to the root, right? Yes. And then we're going to have more and more problems that stem from that. And, and in so many cases in our office, we see, yes, there are some physiological things that need to happen. Right. Nobody's been told how to get their body from this stress mode back to this balance mode by design, the way that God's created it to be. But then the biggest thing that I see is we, we do all these things to get people to you know, reduce their depression or anxiety and never give them the, the full story. Right. You need uh, uh, to be whole. That spirit part has to be a part, right? Yes. And so many doctors, mm -hmm. in fact, I know this not because I know so many doctors, I know this because my patients continue to come in and say, no other doctor has talked to me about my spiritual health. Yeah. You're the first one too. And I almost cry when I hear that because it's a, I feel like we've failed them. Not me personally, mm -hmm. not our office mm -hmm. personally, because mm -hmm. that's what we're doing. But like us as a healthcare system, you can't leave out part of the way man's designed to be go. and ever expect them go. to be completely whole. Right. So that, you know, come on, Jesus has to be a part of that. Yeah. Otherwise the yes. person's going to be yeah. sick to some degree. Yes. Yes. Excellent. Wow. As a lay person, what do you have to say, Judy? Um, you know, I, it's, we kind of joked about this before, but I have said in the microphone downtown in my frustration of understanding, you know, where people are trying to mask the root of the problem. Mm -hmm. I've said, if you don't want Jesus, I don't have anything for you mm -hmm. because really Jesus is yes. the answer. Yes. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the answer. And yes, we have to cast out the demon. We have to deal with this, the spiritual side of things. And we've got the body and the soul, but all those things are led by Holy Spirit. And mm -hmm. how do we get Holy Spirit? Through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Excellent. Well, listen, we're coming near a break and I think we probably ought to take it now because <laughs> we're on a roll here. We'll take a break and we'll be right back. We've got more good things to share with you from a uh, outreach standpoint with these lovely people here that are talking about how they are a part of the church of Jesus Christ that has gone to reach out into this world. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm. 
Don't go away, there's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastures you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pasture suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now, back to the discussion. Thank you for being back with us. And as we continue, we want to um, deal with some of the questions that you have been sending in to us. And we've gotten some very good questions here. Uh, I want to deal with this first question with our, uh, with our guest panel here. How do you honor your parents? This is what the question says. How do you honor your parents when they have been abusive to you or when they are addicted and have stolen from you? Are you supposed to let your children visit them mm -hmm. as grandparents. How, how do you deal with parents when they've been abusive like that? What do you do in that? Uh, abuse is wrong, period. Yes. Um, I think that a lot of times, I think as Christians, we have really twisted the idea of loving someone unconditionally as Jesus would love them. I believe we should. Mm -hmm. But I do believe in boundaries. I do believe in um, not opening the door, um, especially because abuse probably is stemming from some demonic influence of some sort. I'm not going to submit to demons and I'm not going to uh, uh, introduce my children to that type of atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Although I will love you, I will pray for you, I will stand with you. There is an answer to this, again, Jesus Christ, leading them to Jesus Christ and loving them within the boundaries that Holy Spirit leads you to, to be in. I would not ever put my child in a position where they could possibly be abused in the, in the frame of, well, we love everybody like Jesus loves them. Um, abuse is wrong on every level, whether it's verbal, emotional, or physical. And I believe that Jesus would not say, yes, I want you to submit to that because we love people. Um, I think it's gotten twisted. I think it's been covered up a lot in the church. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that, that women, men, children, all should know that Jesus is not about abuse. I mean, he was the ultimate one that was abused, yeah. right? There I mean, he took, he took beatings and betrayal and verbal and emotional <laughs> abuse from, from people that he healed, delivered, and saved. Mm -hmm. So he knows, but I don't believe that he would ever open the door and allow us to stay in that position, but, but create healthy boundaries, but love people um, love people back to Christ or to Christ in the first place. Yeah, yeah. Where do you want to well, I think, you know, if you look at scripture, um, Paul, the apostle Paul, he says that I was a blasphemer and, and a violent man, a violent man. He, he, he was an abusive man. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until that he met Jesus, had a personal encounter with Jesus, that he was able to overcome that abusiveness and that attitude. And so what Jody is saying um, is, uh, you know, is a person that is, is being abusive or, or acting out in an abusive manner, it's being stemmed from, again, this is a spiritual issue. And when they find Christ and when they, when they get filled with the Holy Spirit, then those things will begin to change. So the greatest thing that we could do for somebody that is abusing or being abusive is to introduce them to Christ. And, and, and then, their, then their attitudes, then their, their actions will begin to change. Um, until that, they're gonna continue to act in that same way. And, and Jesus said it the best, forgive them, Father, yeah. for what? For they know not what they do. Yes. They, they don't even realize the verbal abuse. They don't even realize what they're doing because they don't have the Holy Spirit in them yes. revealing how they're hurting people. Yes. So um, that's the key. It is the key. You know, it's, uh, uh, <clears throat> first off, you know, I, I've got amazing parents. I never had to go through that necessarily, praise God. But I see the opposite side of that. Man, you know, honor thy father and mother. We know that that's a command of the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. And it's actually the first one of the promise that you'll have long life when we yeah. do that, right? So how do we do that when we don't have that, you know, relation? I don't think we're to honor our father and mother and be a doormat at the wow. same time, right? Like, or our spouse or whatever it may be. Like you, you, you've all just kind of touched on that, right? We're to still to honor them, love them. 
if, if that was happening, do I take my children to go see them or do I take my, you know, I'm not throwing my children in a pit of vipers, Come right? On. Even mm-hmm. though my God is able to save them from yes. being bit, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. But I'm still not going to throw them in a pit of vipers. Like I'm going to protect them. That's I, they were put into my care. I'm a steward of my children to be able to, you know, take care of and, and protect them like that. However, uh, I want them to witness me seeing me still loving and forgiving 70 yes. times, 70 times, you know, so, so I want them to be a witness to me being Jesus to those people, but I'm, I'm not just going to lay that. I mean, we, we take the word submission in the Bible to a whole different level. A lot mm-hmm. of times in the church, you know, wife submit to your husbands and right. Those kind of things. Mm-hmm. But once again, that doesn't, that doesn't translate to be a doormat, right? Mm-hmm. Be, be, you let everybody wipe their boots on you, you know, or whatever it may be. So. On another issue here that I'm sure as, as people dealing with street ministry and the like you, you encounter, how do you help people to overcome worry? Mm-hmm. You know, Jesus spoke to, to Martha when he visited the home of Martha and, and Mary and, and Lazarus. And he talked to Martha about the fact that she was worried about so many things. And we see with all that's happening in the world today, people are worried about so many things. Mm-hmm. How do you minister to people on that? Particularly out on the street level. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it comes into the church as well and is manifested there too. But there are a lot of people that are not going to come into the church. How do you minister to them where they are? I believe teaching them the character of God and that He cares for you. Mm-hmm. That's in the scripture. It says, cast your cares upon mm-hmm. me mm-hmm. because I care Beautiful for you. you. Mm-hmm. There's a compassion that Jesus has that He says, I know you're worried about many things and I will perfect that which concerns you, Mm -hmm. but you have to trust me and you have to give it to me. And so the biggest thing is is letting go of those worries and saying, okay, I'm going to get a solid foundation of the character of God and know Mm -hmm. the character of God that he's good and he's faithful and he's a restorer and he can reconcile and he can redeem and he can give us double for our trouble. And so when you know those and you focus on the character of God, then it's easier to cast the care because we can tell somebody, don't worry, just stop worrying about it. It's not that big of a deal. You're, You're reading too much in it. And what happens? The person probably starts worrying more because they're dwelling on it. Their eyes are feasted on the problem instead of beholding Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, beholding Jesus who has the answer to every one of our worries. In fact, it says he goes before us. Mm -hmm. He's already went before you and handled Mm -hmm. the problem. So I think ministering the person of Jesus and his character to them and and, and building a solid foundation of who he is and his character so that we can now trust him that when things and circumstances arise, we can cast it on him because he has big enough shoulders to handle it, Mm -hmm. and we do not. And it says in the Bible, what does worry add to your life? It cannot (laughs) add anything to your life. So even somebody watching, your worrying will not change the problem. And so, and so, but I know what can, when you hit your knees and you get in the presence of God and you allow him to give you a heavenly perspective. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's, you know, not to make it simplistic, but what you said, giving it over to him. How do you bring yourself to that point of bringing it to him, putting it on his shoulders and taking it off of your own? How do you do that? You know, I like to think of this uh, just like my kids. So Jesus used children a lot, right? Yes. So I got six little babies, you know, under six. Six little yeah, babies? So six under, and my oldest is 10. But, you know, they'll come to me at night. It's bedtime. Time to go to bed. Come at night. I don't want to, I'm scared, right? I'm worried. There's something. And come on. As we know there's nothing in that room, right? And if, but, it, but if me as a father would just say, just go to bed, it never works. Right. It never wants yeah. just go to bed. In fact, it makes it worse, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I thought about that. That's exactly how Jesus talks to us. So how do you submit, how do you overcome that? Well, by, I literally have to wrap my arms, or they have to wrap their arms around the father, right? Mm-hmm. I have to walk with them to the bedroom. I have to show them, Lord, show me. Right. It's like this relationship thing mm-hmm. yeah. that it can't just be. Oh, yeah. Well, dad said, listen, the Bible says this, you know, right. you know, mm-hmm. and yeah, we stand on the word of God, but we have to have that. We have to wrap our arms around the father. We have to know him. We have yes. to know that I'm, I'm at peace. I'm in comfort here because his arms around me. That bad guy's not going to get me like my kids yes. would think. Right. There's mm-hmm. and or for him to open my eyes to see, turn the light on. There's no boogeyman in the closet. Right. Look, I'm right here. And by the way, I'm never leaving you. I'm right beside your it's room good. right here. So good. Right. Great analogy. Yeah. yeah. It's a terrific mm-hmm. analogy. And I hope a lot of fathers caught that. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of fathers caught that. Still dealing with um, 
some of the questions we're getting from viewers. Here's a question. Very simply and succinctly put, what is a godly way of resolving conflict? What is a godly way of resolving conflict? And I, I, I dare say that's going to vary depending on the circumstances you're dealing with at a given time. But what would you say? Who wants to, who wants to tackle it? Jody, you want to start off? Okay. <laughs> um, you know, I... There's biblical ways that, especially between brothers and sisters in Christ, that we're supposed to handle those things. I, I'm a very, um, I'm a very, uh, I, I don't like using the word confrontational because it's not in an argumentative way, but I like to discuss and communicate with people when I'm feeling something. Mm. And I love that the Bible opens that up to say, go to your brother right. and your sisters and, and handle it that way because um, I'm very much that way. And a lot of times if there are unsaid things, um, that's where the enemy can kind of start playing in your mind and start telling you things that are not even being thought. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, just uh, if there's conflict within the body of Christ, um, I would just say there's a biblical way that he wants us to handle that and to go to your brother and sister in Christ and lovingly just bring whatever the issue is. Because once the enemy is exposed, mm -hmm. then we can then we can yeah. deal with whatever the conflict yeah. is um, that that's that's either been said or not said or thought or not mm -hmm. thought. Um, I just personally went through this and it was like we have to sit down at a table and talk about this mm -hmm. um, so that we can expose the enemy and then we can start the lines of communication because maybe what I'm thinking about you is not at all what you thought about me. Mm -hmm. um, so I would just speak on that just within the body of Christ. Um, you know, outside the body of Christ um, with other people. I mean, you know, he, he promises that we're going to have trials and that we should count it all joy when we do. Um, so I've learned a very hard way that especially when you're tackling spiritual principalities and powers and you're you kind of a forerunner in what he's asked you to do, mm -hmm. there is going to be conflict. You have to just be, you have to understand that you, it, and it goes back to not pleasing man, but pleasing God um, and, and just knowing that you're not going to make everybody happy um, and, just, and just knowing that God's got your back and you just handle it as Holy Spirit leads. Okay. Anybody else? Would I, well, I, want to, I, I felt like the Lord gave me a verse here and um, in James chapter 4 it says, uh, what causes fights and quarrels among among you? And, it, and, and James says, don't they come from your desires that battle uh, within you? You mm -hmm. desire but you do not have so you kill, you covet but you do not get what you want so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. And so immediately what that says to me is when I'm in a confrontation, I have to do a self check. Yes. You know, what, what's my motives here? What, what's my desires? What, what am I, am I upset because I'm not getting my way or I'm not getting what, you know, what I want. And so, um, you know, I think even in with worldly conflicts, you know, Christians can be selfish. We, we can get, I'm preaching to myself now, uh, but you know, we can, we can get frustrated because we're not getting our way. And so, um, you know, James tells us, check your heart first. Yes. And is it really worth the fight? Is it really worth the battle? Um, you know, many times it, it, it's not, it doesn't matter in the realm of things. And it's really gonna hurt our witness yes. if, we, if we move forward in this confrontation, so. Very good, very good. Another question from viewers. There's so many movies that really look scary these days. Um, are these movies okay to go see? Uh, or are we opening ourselves up to demonic entities? We absolutely Ooh. are. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. absolutely are. Yeah, there, there's that, spirits yeah. behind those movies. Mm -hmm. And I, I see that too. We don't watch much TV in our home, but uh, it's pretty sad when you're just watching, uh, you know, even HGTV and then this demonic thing comes up on a commercial. And we have, our eyes are gateways. Yes. Our ears are gateways. Mm -hmm. Like these are, these are gates that That's we right. are to guard. Right. Um, and, um, and I believe it's an open door. You know, Matthew six twenty two says, for your eye is like a lamp that provides light to your whole body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body will be filled full of light. And the opposite is, it also, if your eye is unhealthy and what you're staring at is unhealthy and demonic, then your body can be filled with darkness. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so we have to understand that this is this mm -hmm. these are gates that we have mm -hmm. to protect. Mm -hmm. And so just like you think, oh, it's not that big of a deal. It doesn't bother me. Um, it does as much as you may think it does. It it just does. And that's why people a lot of times will have nightmares after they watch a movie like that. Or, you know, you can feel the spirit of fear. It's a spirit. Um, and, and so we just we cannot open ourselves 
up to that. There's so many more of them coming out, though. I mean, yeah. when, you, when you look at the promos and previews of, and, and the like, they're, they're, they're really bombarding us, aren't they? Yeah, well, you know, the, the enemy knows what territories to hit our, our world in. And I believe, you know, entertainment being one of the seven mountains is a huge music. Um, you know, movies, that, that that's a great area that he works in because a lot of times people do kind of play it down. You know, they're just like, well, I mean, in our home, I don't have a TV. I only listen to worship music and I don't put, feast my eyes on anything that I know that the Holy Spirit, I would be convicted of. Our body is a temple. And so I'm really careful about what I feast my eyes on. But I, I think that all of hell is really trying to move in any territory that he possibly can. And entertainment is a huge, and we come from a music background. Mm -hmm. And Lucifer mm -hmm. was, he was the director of yes, worship. Yes, so yes. I feel like that's really a, a super high area that he really tries to operate in because it was what his original design was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I just think it's a, definitely a tool of the enemy. You know, it's not even just in like the scary movies or the gory things or the, you know, sexually driven movies, like having those baby, six babies that I have, mm -hmm. I have to be careful just to take them in any, any kids movie. Like, oh, this is for kids. So true. I'm extra careful when it comes to that because it's not just black and white. Oh, that's not a movie we're going to. It's about killing people or, you know, goriness. That's easy. It's, oh, this is a kid-driven kid movie, right? Disney or whatever you want to call it. And we go to that. And then all the agendas that we see in the world that are not of God, right, start to creep in, right? Mm -hmm. All of a sudden you see, you know, two, two boys in the movie and you see two girls and you see all these other th issues that I know are not good for my kids. But then my kids start asking questions. And sometimes we don't think it really affected them. Yeah. Listen, just like you said, like, like Satan knows where to get in to these places. Our eyes are supposed to be windows to like the word of God, right? And to mm -hmm. the goodness of God and to the beauty of God, creation. But it's also can be the opposite of that. And, and research shows that there are things once they're burnt, like once we see them, we can't unsee them, right? right. They're mm -hmm. just burnt. So we have to be so careful. To, and I don't want to be the, the kid with my, my kids are, yeah, I want them to be sheltered. Don't get me wrong. But, but I don't want them to never be able to enjoy like, you know, a kid's movie or something like that. But I'm just extra careful. The minute we start, we've walked, got up and walked out of movies before with our yeah. kids because I was like, no, we ain't doing it. You know, yeah. I've got about a minute left. You, you, well, I was <laughs> I just going to say, um, you know, when you read the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter one, and he, he talks about not eating the, uh, the king's food, the royal and dainty food. Oh, okay. It's, good. it's not, you know, that fasting, it really wasn't about the food. Right. It said that Daniel purposed in his heart not to defile himself. And so as Christians, boy, I'm preaching to somebody right yeah, now. You, we've got to purpose in our heart not to defile ourselves with worldly things. Yeah. Yeah. And then when we do, our appearance will look better than anybody else. And then God will give us the giftings and the blessings. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Very well put, very well put. And a good way to end our show on today. Thank you very much for all your contributions this week and last week. It's really been enlightening. It's been, it's been beautiful. It's been real. It's Thank been real. You. Thank you. Well, that's our program for this week. We'll be back again next week. Until then, I am Bill Harris. Have a wonderful day. God bless you. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.